to another Pick a Card reading. Today's reading is going to be What Do Your Friends Want to Tell You? Um, but they can't, but they won't, um, but they just don't. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be bad because, um, you know, I keep my friends humble <laughs> and then brag about them behind their backs a lot of times. So um, this isn't necessarily gossip, but it can be. Um, we, you have six piles to choose from. They're all pink because on Wednesdays we all wear pink. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so let's get into the first one. I'm going to walk through the charms for you. The first is this Hello Kitty. It was on the top of a toothbrush, and it's holographic. Isn't she cute? Oh, Hello Kitty. So that's pile number one. Pile number two is this Sugar Skull I got from a coworker. She uh, brought it back on her trip to Mexico. She was sweet enough to give it to me. Pile number two, pile number three is just a simple post-it. Pink post-its. Pile number four is this pink agate. Pink agate represents forgiveness. It's a stone for forgiveness and friendship and mutual affection. Very sweet stone. For pile number five, we have the pink glitter. Yes, sparkle, sparkle. Live your life like you're sparkling. Live your life. And then pile number six is this jagged pink quartz crystal. Very beautiful. You can't quite see the pink, but in real life, it will blow you away. So I will let you deliberate. You probably already decided. Okay, pile number one. Let's get into it. Move y'all aside. Get over here. And boop, 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 boop. Okay, for Hello Kitty, what do we have? What do we have? For your oracle cards, we have Akasha. You are a spiritual teacher. You have the ability to counsel others and help them awaken to their spiritual gifts and divine mission. We also have self-love. I'm not going to read all that, but um, your friends probably see you as very wise, very spiritually aligned, and very, like, practicing self-love. So um, you might be someone who doesn't often have... Um, a relationship right and they might be sort of blown away at your ability to be single not everyone can do that um, but you can be independent and it ain't no thing for you and you are very compassionate with yourself understanding with yourself and you lead by example um, to sort of teach others spiritually by loving yourself right what else do we have we have the queen of swords reversed Ghostbusters flying out of her mouth. We have the moon, Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy, and we have the nine of chalices. So what your friends want to tell you is that you are the woman of wisdom or the man of wisdom. You have so much um, wisdom to offer, so much advice to offer. They get a lot of great advice from you. And um, a lot of times it's intuitive, so it might seem like totally out there, totally out of the blue, but it's like you can pick up on the other side, on the other realm, and so you know um, sort of the higher purpose, and um, you don't really let ego get in the way. Also, I want to say that you might have been someone who has been through a lot. You might have had uh, terrible relationships, um, just a hard life, and as a result, you can be that source of wisdom because it's like you have lived through it, right? I also feel like for 
some of you, you could be helpful in regards to motherhood. Like if someone is dealing with maternity, you know, maybe you are a mother and so you've been there, you've done that and you have wisdom to offer. Um, and with this nine of chalices, uh, they feel very content in your presence. They feel like you live in the moment, that you're very present with them, that you listen to them and only them. You're the type of person who will turn off their phone and, um, really engage with what's around you really engage with your friends and you don't let anything else dis distract you because your time is precious and whoever like queen of swords and self-love this is a very independent energy right so you don't just waste time on anyone if some like you're happy being on your own right <laughs> and sort of dealing with these mysteries and um you're cool being on your own, so anyone who is going to occupy your time, uh, you're really going to be there in the moment with them instead of like sort of drifting off uh, somewhere else because um, you could just be with yourself. <laughs> you ultimately don't need anyone else, so um, if someone is in your life, then that means that they're very important, right? So your friends, they might not let you know that you are very wise and that you have good advice. Maybe sometimes you actually sort of piss them off with your advice and um, you might come out as sort of bitchy and cold because the Queen of Swords can be a bitchy and cold energy. Um, and it may seem like not logical to them with this moon, right? Um, but because you have sort of an access to things beyond the surface you have access to the spiritual realms uh, better than others and because you have lived through a lot of experiences yourself ultimately your advice is pretty good and pretty spot on and if they get upset about it it's because they just don't want to listen to the advice so they probably aren't telling you that you um, are right <laughs> just out of ego but um, what they would say to you is that you do offer a lot of good advice and um, just by like living the way you do, right? Um, you like live as, as an example, but even whenever you um, offer like your words of wisdom, sometimes they don't immediately take it as, um, as good advice, but then later they realize, oh yeah, she was right about that, or he was right about that. Let's get some more cards. We have the Page of Ghost reversed, Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy, with the Page of Pentacles, which is blinking, Taurus Virgo Capricorn energy, and we have the King of Swords, both the King and Queen. It's likely you are an air sign, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, and your friends could be earth sign or water sign, but again, you could also be a water sign too. Signs don't really matter, but it's just a strong like air energy here. But the King of Swords is um, not, I mean, he has a little different flavor than the Queen of Swords, um, but he's in the same family, right? And so he's not totally unlike her. This is someone who's very logical, very intelligent, very smart, and again, with that wisdom, with being wise. Um, someone who draws boundaries, someone who um, lives by the law of the land. And with this page of Pentacles, I feel like your friends learn a lot from you. They study like what you're doing, um, how you're living your life. Um, you're sort of like this Oprah guru to them. And sometimes they might um, be uh, sort of shy. Um, you know, whenever your friends are like, are you mad at me? Why are you mad at me? <laughs> but I feel like you might have friends who, um, like you might have rich resting bitch face or um, you could be a little like outwardly cold. Like inside, I feel like you're deeply emotional, but inside you might be a little cold and it's nothing personal to them, but because they might be a sensitive person, um, they sort of take your cold, stoic, uh, exterior as uh, something personal, something against them, um, but it could, like, you could be totally, like, not even thinking about them at the time, right? I get it. I'm a Libra. I often, um, you know, you can, like, be as delicate as possible, and sometimes whenever you're an air sign, people will still think that you're a cold bitch, even though, like, you've tried to, um, be as sweet as you can, right? So, um, 
sometimes the air energy is just misunderstood and um, they could sort of take that sort of sharp energy um, harsher than they really need to. Um, so it might be important to uh, encourage them that, um, you know, it's not personal against them, um, that that's just who you are. <laughs> um, but um, I think the reason that they don't tell you that you offer good wisdom is because of this sort of like shyness, are you mad at me? They might actually take your criticisms as um, something personal. You know, sometimes it's not always hard, or excuse me, it's not always easy to um, keep our friends humble, right? It's not always easy to um, call our friends out on their shit, <laughs> but that's what friends are supposed to do. And so um, you might crack down, um, you might like throw down this sort of truth to them over and over again and it feels like negative criticism when actually it's like constructive criticism that you're trying to give them, right? It's like you're trying, you, you don't want them to sell themselves short, you want them to be the best that they can be and they take it as like, are you mad at me? Instead of like, no, I just want you to do better for yourself, right? Um, so that could be the misunderstanding, uh, the reason why uh, they won't tell you that sort of stuff. But anyway, let me know if that resonated. I love you very much. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like a personal reading, check the description box below. I love you. Bye. Okay, pile number two. Pile number two with my sugar skill. Sugar skull, sugar skull. We have, what do your friends want to tell you? Yes, the timing is right for this new venture. A happy outcome follows your positive expectations. Okay. We also have worthiness. Okay. We have knave of wands reversed. We have three of pentacles. And temperance. We also have five of pentacles. I'm trying to get this all in the frame. King of pentacles reversed. Knight of wands reversed. Give me just a second, guys. I'm trying to. Um, signs we have strong Sagittarius energy. We have the Knight and the Knave of Wands. We have Temperance here. Uh, there's also a possibility for Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn energy here. I feel like your friends sort of mistake your sense of adventure, your sense of exploring new things, uh, frontiers, just your need for excitement as um, like not having respect for yourself. I don't feel like your friends are right. <laughs> I just want to put that out there um, because I actually, this is from, I got this idea from another tarot reader and she's great. No offense to her. It just wasn't the reading for me. Uh, but, um, it was the same topic of what would your friends say to me, say to you. And, um, you know, it was one of those like irritating tarot reads because it was like, yeah, I know you think that, but you're wrong. <laughs> so I feel like this is a pile um, where um, your friends are wrong, but this is what they would say to you if they could, but I don't necessarily think that they're right in this. Um, but I feel like they might get a sense that you are someone who is unable to commit, who is... Um, a bit of a hoe, a bit of a slut, um, someone who is a little ADD, someone who can't sit still, um, maybe someone who is too much at times, um, but someone who um, really can't honor their commitments because they 
their mind is always somewhere else sort of like this wanderer uh, type of energy like they like you always need more you always need like um, stimulation right um, get bored easy and I feel like they think that uh, you don't respect yourself that you don't honor yourself but I feel like you do um, I feel like you might feel like a bit of a lone wolf in your friend group with this five of Pentacles the five of Pentacles talks about being left out in the cold and I don't um, I don't mean like you are an outcast or anything but you know you might be in a group of friends where everyone else is BFFs and you're just kind of like the third wheel to your friendship group um, but it's because you do have a sense of adventure and wanting to explore more um, frontiers and I feel like you have your own stuff going on too with this three of pentacles usually the three of pentacles talks about teamwork but in this deck it shows a singular man who is working on these different doors and he's um, doing each door differently and so I feel like you have uh, projects, goals, dreams behind the scenes that you are focused on, you are dedicated to, but you don't necessarily talk with your friends about and so they feel like you are sporadic and leaving the group and you know always off doing different things but really behind the scenes you are putting in a lot of work on yourself and um, you might sort of be a little bit of a braggart when it comes to relationships or dating or um, you know sex or anything like that um, if you aren't sexually active if you um, don't resonate with this like friends thinking you're a hoe type of energy then it could just be um, that uh, sort of attention deficit type of thing, right? Where um, you have so many things going on at once that you can't really commit to one thing. But I do feel like you are really committed to something. Um, you just don't outwardly like show that to your friends for whatever reason. Maybe because you are dealing with some worthiness. Um, and like I said, I feel like they're wrong about you um, not respecting yourself in regards to um, being promiscuous or um, being impulsive or anything like that um, I feel like that is just your style and um, nothing to be ashamed about right it's just how you roll if you are resonating with that um, energy like if you're safe if you're responsible and um, you're open and honest about just having fun then what's the point in trying to like commit to someone if you're not ready right if you're not ready like with temperance temperance is all about moderation and so it's like you know there'll be a time when you're ready so why waste someone else's time if you're not ready right <laughs> like you want to explore these different things so why commit to something when you know that you're just gonna feel antsy um, like thinking the grass is always greener right like you're in a time of your life where you want to explore all of these pastures and there's nothing wrong with that if you're honest and open with everyone and I feel like you are honest and open with everyone about that but your friends might just be coming from a different um, perspective um, on how to date on how to be in relationships on um, who to sleep with and why and all of this stuff and so I feel like you might be a little misunderstood from your friends but this sort of secret project that you have behind the scenes I think that does have to do with worthiness maybe you feel like um, I feel like I'm getting pressure so it's like if you tell your friends that you know you're working on this big thing behind the scenes then you might feel like they will pressure you to um, give them a finished product um, when you want to work on your own pace right when like the pressure would um, cause more of these impulses cause more of this sort of attention deficit um, sort of scattered energy uh, fleeing projects not finishing them and so if you keep this to yourself then um, you can finish them on your own time and um, I feel like you might not be as open and upfront about these side projects that you're doing behind the scenes because 
um, you know, if you, I don't know, if you're working on some sort of door making contest and you fail that contest, um, you don't want to uh, have to tell the results to your friends, right? And so you don't want them to think that um, you're unworthy. Um, you know, maybe you do have your hand in a lot of different cookie jars and so um, if you are working really hard on something behind the scenes, you don't want to be seen as someone who, um, like, this is just another cookie jar, right? Like, this is actually something that is important to you, um, but um, it's kind of like a boy cried wolf situation, right? So you might have had some things that were important to you in the past, and, um, you know, you might have failed with failed at them or lost interest or whatever the case may be and so you're not really um, open to sharing this particular thing because you just want to make sure it's a solid done deal um, but you know I feel like this is a group of friends where there are BFFs sorry there are BFFs and you might not be a BFF you might be sort of like an outlier in the group and that's fine like if you're comfortable being a lone wolf um, you know you still have friends and it doesn't like take away your friendships it's just I feel like you have um, just so many more pastures to explore that um, being so insular being so like dedicated to this group would only hold you back from those explorations from that adventure and so um, you know your friends might not totally see 100% of who you are, um, but yes, what they would tell you is, um, you know, you're a little impulsive, um, you don't stick to things, but I feel like they're wrong. <laughs> Let me know if that resonated. I love you very much. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and if you would like a personal reading, check the description box below. I love you. Bye. Pile number three, what would your friends tell you if they could, if they would? What would your friends tell you? We have Bridget, caution is warranted. Look deeper into the situation before proceeding further. We also have patience. Okay, okay. Pile number three, we have the five of wands reversed. We have judgment reversed. We have the full reversed. A strong message. Jeez, beat it home, guys. Um, okay, let's see. We have the three of cups. We have the world reversed. And we have the seven of pentacles. So um, this is a clear sign. What your friends would tell you is that no, don't do what you're doing. Stop doing what you're doing. This is a dead end. You will not get to the next level with this person or with this situation. You're being foolish. You're being reckless. Stop doing it. You haven't learned your lesson. Um, what your friends would tell you is that this venture is a waste of time. What your friends would tell you is to have patience that something better is out there for you. But whatever you're pushing for right now is not a good idea. It's not going to work and um, you're better than that. And I feel like what your friends would tell you is that you are not putting your seeds in the right things, right? You are investing your time, your energy. Uh, your money, um, your effort into uh, a dead end street, into something that will never put you at that next level, into something that will never complete you. Um, it's like I'm being shown the image of like a car leaking, like oil leaking from a car. The more oil you put in, the more it leaks from your car. And um, what you really need to do is fix the car random image so maybe some of you do have a car that your friends are like get this taken care of <laughs> um but that's only going to be for some of you hold on one second um okay so but this is caution um caution is warranted look deeper into this situation don't be foolish don't be reckless 
um, judgment is not being able to rise above, not being able to ascend to that next level, not being able to achieve what you want to achieve to go past the hell that you're living in. Five of Wands. Five of Wands talks about competition and we have a brick wall here. You're never going to break through this brick wall. The world is closing a chapter. You're never going to close a chapter. And the Seven of Pumpkins or the Seven of Pinnacles, it talks about planting seeds, waiting for your harvest. When it is reversed, it's like nothing is here. <laughs> no one, like you will reap nothing. You are wasting your time. And so with this patience card, I feel like they're telling you, um, to not hurry this like they want good things for you they're not trying to sabotage you they're not trying to like put you down it's not like they um don't believe in you or anything it's just that they know like something is better and you're wasting your time or what on whatever this is right a relationship a job um whatever it is right so um they just want better for you with the three of cups they have a lot of fun with you they love you they um love to celebrate with you um you are the rock to the group i feel like i feel like the party doesn't start until you are there and so whenever they like cautioning you it isn't selfish but they do miss their friend, they do want to see their friend, and they have a lot of fun with you, and they sort of need you, right? Um, but they love you so much, they feel like you're making a bad choice, you're making a bad judgment, you're making a bad decision on this, and um, you're being really reckless and being really foolish. Um, so that's a strong message. Um, this is what your friends want to tell you doesn't mean that they're right but I mean it's pretty clear I would listen to your friends just because that message was so strong you can thumbs me down if you want but I mean it was so strong uh, anyway I love you very much like share comment and subscribe if you would like a personal reading check the description box below I love you bye okay pile number three with the pink agate what would your friends tell you we have opal sweet your children on earth and in heaven are happy and well cared for by god and the angels and we have nature okay pink agate we also have ace of chalices reversed we have the seven of wands and we have the two of swords strong child energy with opal with this um ace of chalices in this deck uh is about a baptism and then we have two of swords in this deck it's about a baby who is um at a doorstep of a nun we have the emperor reversed hierophant and the wheel of fortune okay what your friends want to tell you is they first of all this if you do have children they're a little um a little protective at um you know maybe you have ran to your friends about problems in your marriage we do have the hair font here that signifies marriage um but maybe you have like told them about some problems just venting and so they are protective about your baby daddy um they don't really view him in a good light right now with the emperor reverse they um they might feel like he's kind of a deadbeat they might feel like he's not like um invested in the child with this ace of chalices this is a baby baptism right and so two loving parents are baptizing their child whenever it's reversed it's like um not that like joyful investment in the child and this is like a complete disregard of that child right with like a baby on the doorstep and then this nun uh with this seven of wands it's a little different in this deck it shows a man who is moving a rock and looking into a cave so this is kind of like um it's not it's like the opposite of phallic like i won't get like too gross but basically it's like um opening up to someone, um, being vulnerable to someone, letting someone in, right? Um, so 
your friends, what they want to tell you is that, you know, maybe you gave this person too many chances. Maybe you um, let them in when they shouldn't. You might have even like taken them back or something um, and maybe you gotten pregnant unexpectedly with this wheel of fortune. Maybe like, um, you know, you weren't expecting a new child and it just sort of happened because um, they entered your cave. <laughs> also have uh, nature here uh, so what your friends want to tell you is um, to do something with them in nature go for a hike um, maybe you guys can garden together um, I, something significant about nature maybe go to the botanical gardens together um, but I also feel like I'm hearing like nature versus nurture, right? So it's like a guy can father children, but can they be a dad? Um, and this may or may not be true about your baby daddy, right? Um, this is just what your friends want to tell you, but they don't have to be right. They could be wrong, right? But this is strong child energy. I'm trying to think, you know, for those of you who don't have kids, for those of you who don't have kids, children can be creative projects. So maybe they feel like um, you aren't nurturing your creative projects because you're too focused on love. But I feel like for pile number three, wait, sorry. For pound number four, um, this is going to be for mothers and um, or fathers or those who have, have children. Um, and if you are a guy who has children, they might your friends might want to tell you that um, you know you're being a deadbeat dad and you need to step up. But how do you tell your friend that? Anyway, let me know if that resonated. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you would like a personal reading, check the descrip description box below. I love you. Bye. Okay, pile number five with the pink glitter sparkle. Let's sparkle. What do your friends want to tell you? This is sparkly. I am the angel of families. A happy change or addition is coming to your family. Sparkle, sparkle, Serafina. We also have no need to do. Okay. We have ten of chalices reversed, ten of swords, and the world reversed. We have seven of imps, eight of imps reversed, and the three of swords, or three of bets. Let me process this, process this a little bit. You know, this is a lot like pile number four, so if you felt drawn to pile number four, you might want to uh, check that one out too, but... Um, it's not as child heavy, but um, I do see a family here. I see children here. I see uh, perhaps a miscarriage. I'm sorry if you experienced that. Uh, perhaps a miscarriage, perhaps a um, even an abortion or uh, just not being able to care for a child, right? Um, I also see maybe some of you are um, looking into fertility treatments and it just hasn't happened yet and you keep like getting your period you keep um, you know there might be some miscarriages but you keep um, coming up short and trying to have a family and this is a long like 
this is a repeated pattern. This is not um, something new. This is something that keeps happening. Uh, you may have experienced a divorce recently too. I think that's for um, a very small number of you. But what your friends would say is that they feel like if you don't have children, if you um, aren't miscarrying, if you're not trying to conceive, um, if you're not taking like, you know, fertility treatments or anything like that, sorry, sorry, um, then this could be um, just wanting a family in general and uh, you keep coming up, uh, you keep like attracting jokers in your life. Um, so this is for a number of people who uh, there has been a long and painful road uh, that you just can't close a cycle and um, you know you want this happily ever after with someone and um, you just keep running into bad luck, running into more heartache and um, your friends might be the type um, who are like, fuck him, right, or like, cut him off, or, um, um, they're just really protective of you in that way, right? Um, what I want to say, um, is with this no need to do card, I feel like your friends, um, what they want to tell you is that the stress that you have over the situation is creating more resistance, right? If you would just relax, then maybe you could conceive. If you would just relax, then maybe Mr. Wright would come in. If you could just relax, then, um, you know, you wouldn't attract so many things. I don't know if that's true. You know, maybe you have relaxed, but, um, I also feel like, because we did Ha this was the sparkle pile and this is sparkly and then we have some sparkles here and so I feel like what your friends would tell you is that um, you are so much more like beautiful and vibrant and sort of magnificent and shiny and sparkly and you sort of um, like you might have had some heartbreak that knocked you down a peg and made you feel like you didn't have sparkle, like you didn't shine, um, you weren't as pretty as you thought you were, or something like that. But they just see you as like sparkly, pretty, shiny person, and maybe that you sell yourself short, um, and that you know they might be a little irritated that you let people or circumstances um, dull your sparkle, but. You still have sparkle, and they want you to know that. And they would tell you that you need to relax in order to... Um, it could also be medical problems, because we have acupuncture and um, a labor, a delivery room here. Um, so uh, maybe you are dealing with some health problems, and what your friends would tell you is um, your health would get a lot better if you just... Um, didn't think of, um, didn't think of it so negatively, right? Change your mindset a little. Relax. Don't stress so much. You could also experience some, um, family, like, uh, family health issues. Taking care of your family. Being heartbroken because a family member is sick. But they, what they want to tell you is not to stress as much and to relax more and to um, not dull your sparkle. So let me know if that resonated. I love you very much. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you would like a personal reading, check the description box below. I love you. Bye.
Okay, last but not least, pile number six with the jagged rose quartz. It's beautiful, it's beautiful, I tell ya. We have Archangel Uriel, your emotions are healing, which enables you to open to greater love. I will help you release anger and unforgiveness from your heart and mind. We also have trust. What your friends would tell you. We have the Nine of Pentacles reversed. We have the King of Wands. We have the Magician, strong Aries energy. Could also be Leo Sagittarius. We have the Hanged Man reversed, Pisces energy. Five of Cups reversed and the Nine of Wands. Sorry. So, what your friends would tell you is to get off your butt, put the burdens down, stop sulking. <laughs> to take action in your life, to believe in yourself, believe in your abilities, trust that people have your back, trust that the universe has your back, stop being so paralyzed in um, this idea that no one's going to help you, you have to do everything on your own, that um, all of your efforts are in vain, that things didn't work out in your favor, you have too much to do, life is too hard, they want you to stop complaining. <laughs> Um, and if you're offended by my laugh, I'm sorry I laugh. Um, it's a natural human thing. It releases emotion and it's better than crying, right? So get over it. Okay, so the Archangel Uriel. We have your emotions are healing, which enables you to open to a greater love. I will help you release anger and unforgiveness from your heart and your mind. So there's something that you are having a hard time forgiving with this Five of Cups here too. It's like sulking, um, thinking about um, what went wrong, and um, with this Nine of Pentacles here, I feel like there is a lot of blame. There's a lot of not taking ownership of your own lives. Probably going to get a thumbs down on this group, but you know what? It happens. Anyway, I feel like there's a lot of blame, a lot of putting the burden on others when um, you are in fact blessed to have these burdens because the thing about wands is with the nine and the ten of wands that's my queen we are the champions card um it's been no bed of roses it's been no pleasure cruise so to get to the top is not easy but god entrusted in you to do whatever this is to have that grand romance to have that great career whatever the case may be god entrusted in you to be a leader and so being a leader with great power comes great responsibility, right? And so you do have to take on burdens, but you don't have to take on unnecessary burdens. You can say no to people. You can delegate to people. You can ask for help and trust that they're going to do the job that they need to. Some of y'all are controlling. Some of y'all micromanage people. So if you do delegate to someone else, then um, you don't trust them to do that job and you go back and do the work, right? So you either need to train them better or ask for um, more specific things or um, Uh, what was I going to say? Except that they're not going to do things exactly like you do them, right? Um, but what your friends would tell you is to um, stop sulking and take matters into your own hands because they do believe in you. It's not because they think like, oh, this like annoying person complaining again. No, they love you. That's why they're. That's why you're their friend, right? Um, but they believe that. You are um, the man, right? You are the person to take charge. And um, whenever you complain and get into this sulky, um, like anger and um, resentment towards others, then um, like you're not living to your fullest potential. You are um, You're sort of uh, taking for granted like the gifts that God gave you, um, taking for granted like the path that you were put on because 
Um, not everyone can be the leader of this path. The King of Wands is a leader, right? And even if you aren't a leader of a group, you're the leader of your own life. And that's really inspirational to others. That's really motivating to others. And so whenever you sulk, then that doesn't inspire anyone, right? Um, so believe in yourself. They want you to believe in yourself. Um, and have trust in others to do the jobs that you delegate to them. Um, but sort of what they want to tell you is to get out of your own way by just forgiving um, others and um, not being so uh, angry all the time, right? Not being so disappointed, frustrated, and um, burdened all the time, right? Tough love, sorry, but that's what your friends would tell you. Maybe they're wrong, maybe not. I don't know. Let me know. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like a personal reading, check the description box below. I love you. Bye.